Now, today's a very, very special day uh, for one reason. It's Mother's Day. Uh, so we, <laughs> we heard a little story in the United States of America where uh, the inmates, uh, you know, there are many uh, prisons are filled, filled with uh, inmates. And then uh, a guy, it's a Christian organization, thought of uh, trying something. So he bought cards and uh, put, put them in prisons, you know, literally for inmates to use. And uh, on Mother's Day, all the cards were used. You know, the inmates took the cards, wrote to their mothers, and did all they could. And then uh, it was so successful that they had to have another batch of, of, of cards. So the Christian organization thought, well, because the Mother's Day worked so well, Let's do the same on Father's Day. And then uh, Father's Day came, the broad cards, and nothing was used. <laughs> <laughs> and the big lesson is many sons grow up with a grudge against with, uh, their dad because dads haven't functioned as fathers. So there's something about mothers that is so important that we can spend Days and days talking about mothers. So when I knew it was Mother's Day, um, I thought a lot about our own mothers. You know, uh, my mom, she is frail, she's weak. I cannot talk if you were there. It's, it's just impossible. Thank you. Apologies accepted. You know, my, my brain just works that way. You know, once there's a disturbance, everything shuts. All right. So, but uh, it's important, you know. Uh, Jerome is very uh, professionally. will never come if there's nothing urgent. Uh, all right. So, where was I? Mother. So, I've been thinking about my own mom. You know, we recently made a trip uh, with my wife to, uh, to do some ministry. And she's frail. You know, she's, she's, she's just finished completely, and, uh, you know, arthritis have just destroyed the fingers and, and, and toes. She cannot even put her feet uh, in, in shoes or, or flip-flops because all the bones are totally twisted. And, uh, you know, she jokes a lot. You know, she jokes a lot. I don't know if this is where we took our joking anointing from. <laughs> but uh, in the frailty and sickness, she just told us, hey, you know, Every disease in a book, medical book, I finished on my body. When is God going to take me? Because there's nothing to be sick of that I haven't been sick of. So, you know, these are deep words that stay with you, and then you think, you know, Mama could have done this, could have done that, but because of us, she stayed around. And then, you know, thought about my mother-in-law, uh, you know, she's also another character. You know, the other time, you know, we, we're talking, and she goes, but, you know, every time you come, I pray for you, but Papa never prayed for me. You know, what is it? So uh, I remember that I needed to pray for my mother-in-law. And then I thought about my own wife, uh, such a blessing, and many, many more of you in this room today. Now, when all this stuff, you know, floods your mind, and then you think and you, uh, you connect them to the day, then you begin to go, probably we can have a talk around the issue. And I want to talk today to the church and myself about this topic. Think about your legacy. That's the title of a message. Think about your legacy. It's a very, very profound thing that you're going to be sharing today. And I just want you to stay with me. And it was good to be at the early service and to see our service going again because we disrupted them for two Sundays in a row. But I'm glad that today, you know, we went back to our own uh, activities in the early service. Let's, let's, let's ask a simple question. You know, I did ask the same question in the early service. I want to ask it. And I want you to be... Uh, to use your imagination. 
And Paul is in town uh, doing her own stuff. And she bumps into Yokai. And the two of them happen to be very good friends. And then Yokai goes, hey, Paul, how are you doing? Are we family? And then go, no, 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 it's fine. You know, rap is good. The kids are fine. Uh, I always work, and then you know, you know, we just talk about stuff. And then there's a moment of silence. <clears throat> Paul cleanses her throat, and she goes, hey, By the way, let me talk to you about my mother in law. What will run through your mind? Your friend tells you, let me talk, you, talk to you about my mother-in-law. 99,9%. Something wrong will cross your mind before they say anything. Because the legacy of mothers-in-law have been tainted by some irresponsible mothers-in-law. Told again, I've heard of Trevor Noah. I've seen his pictures all over Johannesburg the time that I traveled there. And I knew that he's a presenter in the United States, but I didn't know his comedian side uh, until a few days ago. Uh, I'm, I'm zapping through channels because I was looking for National Geography. I lost track of you know, what, what number it was. And then here's Trevor Noah you know, doing his stuff on TV. And I thought, ah. Let me just spend, you know, 30 seconds just to pick up what is he talking about. And a 30 seconds turns into 30 minutes. <laughs> you, know, I, 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 you know, I could not change it. I'm going, this guy is bad news, you know. <laughs> so he jokes, he laughs, and he says stuff, and, you know, impersonate people, changes the tone of his voice, picks up Obama's accent, picks up, you know, uh, the famous, you know, uh, Yankee guy who was doing the, you know, sign language and then didn't mean anything. And then all the stuff that is going on. And then in a moment of craziness, joke, co comedy, he drops nuggets of wisdom that have to make thinking people think. Because the big thing he carved, it was around Pit uh, Pistorius. What is his name? Peter. Oscar, Peter is another one. Peter is an evangelist. <laughs> Oscar Pistorius. That was the whole comedy around it, and then he would throw stuff. And then there was a moment where he said, Oscar stands up and says, the reason why I shot, it's because I heard a ladder against the wall and people climbing into the room. And Trevor said, any person who heard Pistorius talking about it, what kind of people did you think entered the bathroom? He said, no one thought this huge Africana climbed the wall. The mind is a black man. And that, for me, spoke volume. If you're not careful about the legacy, in the next few years, when we talk about Christianity, the picture will not be about a loving community washed in the blood of Jesus. It will be a bunch of hooligans who manipulate and use people to enrich themselves. A community of people who don't know what Doing the talking is. They talk about love, but they hate each other. An irrelevant body of people who are wasting time and they are good for readings in a community. Think about your legacy. Would you tell your neighbor, neighbor? Yeah. Think about your legacy. Yeah. That's the dimension of Christianity that you have missed. A level of thinking, deep thought, as you go along doing a Christian life. So the story of mother-in-law really caught me because I was blessed with a good, very good mother-in-law.
problem free. You know? <laughs> and I thought how many people are cursed to have bad mothers in law. But today we are going to look at a fantastic woman. She made it in the Bible because she left a legacy that you want us to look into and then move forward to some stuff. Let's take our reading from Ruth chapter 1, and I will read from verse 11. Uh, we will just dig our heels into this and then be blessed together. Are you ready? Good. I'm reading from NIV. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and ten and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. What a story. And I would think when I read about Naomi, about our behavior, the Christian of the 21st century, where people leave church because they had bad marks at school and they think that God had betrayed them. And yet it's not God's fault because God cannot study for you. Ah, uh, we're talking. You invited me. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. How amazing it is that someone would be all twisted and ugly over petty stuff. Then you begin to understand the depth of the subject God gave us to debate and discuss in 2016, growth. Because you see, growth doesn't have only a dimension of swelling in numbers, bank accounts, and stuff, but growth has a dimension that is invisible, that is the depth in a human heart. I listen to stuff on TV, on National Geography, where the journalist will say, the skies are more explored, the outer space is more explored than the depth of the sea. A lot of stuff are still unknown. Because many people are impressed by what is outside. A car I drive, a house I live in, stuff I do. But what is the depth of your inner man? Think about your legacy. It's easy to make a difference between a mature and immature individual. All you need to do, make them face issues of life. A small child cries, complains throw tantrums all around the place, but mature people know problems come and go. <laughs> if they do come, there's an exit door. Therefore, I need not to wake me up. I need to chill and relax. There's something that you cannot win except through experience and maturity. Think about your legacy. At the stage of life where we are, over the 50s, you're not worried anymore about what many youngsters are worried about, to impress, to have fanatics, people who agree with you, because we have a different set of questions. When heaven calls me, what will stay behind me? When people in the corner of their lives begin to think about my name, what do they say? We lost both our dads. Amal Albertine have just returned from burying a mother. And many more of you have lost parents. But you know, when you begin to think about these great people who have nurtured you and raised you to a level where you are, really you think about the degrees. Even if they've achieved degrees at thermometer, it doesn't impress you. It's something else that speaks more than achievement.
We have a huge crisis. Men and women, we look to whether in the sports field, whether it's in science, whether it's in religious space, politics. These are people who show enormous charisma, but very little character. Therefore, the next generation is in a crisis of people they can emulate. I want to be like somebody, but I don't see the template. I want to be like mama, but not my mama. Think about your legacy. Ruth encounters a woman of a different nature. It's pure poetry. She doesn't say life treats me well. She says, I can see that the hand of God is against me. Well, at this, they wept again, which means they wept before. Then Opa, we have opas in our churches. We have opas in our schools. We have opas in our communities. That when they begin to count the price, they cut the losses quickly. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. I want the God of Mama Beya because he's a God who gives cars. I want the God of Mama Beya because he's a God who can give you a house in Constantia. I want to go to Mama Bea because he can give you the best husband like Mama Bea's husband, you know, <laughs> this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Christianity in the 21st century, it's all about a God who can pamper me, a God who can shower me with blessings. But what about the God of Naomi? Who sometimes surprises your faith. When you think through my holiness, God will surely bless me. He takes your husband. When you think surely because I don't sin, he takes your two sons. Ah, Christians of the 21st century will never understand the power of the words in the book of Ruth. Because in Israel, the value of a mother, the value of a woman is about the man around her. If you have sons, you are sorted. If your husband, you are sorted. An husbandless woman is in trouble. Worst of all, a husbandless and a sonsless wife, woman, is in a big mess. They didn't die years apart. They died in succession. She paints the picture. This is me. This is my life. This is my world. Choose. Well, Opa, she's a thinker. She goes, hmm, I'm 32. She's 78. Even if my miracle of Sarah, she falls pregnant. Before the guy marries me, you have to be minimum 20 by Jewish law. 78 plus 20, which works, 98. I will be 52. Therefore, meno, pause, <laughs> would have come. No, 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 no. The Bible says when she checked what was at stake, she kissed her again and said goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, in our churches, we have people who are hurt because their friend have kissed them goodbye. You know, that boy who told you, you and I, we're going to grow old together. Now you are not 25 yet. He's already gone. Oh, I'm talking to the wrong church. I'm talking to the wrong church. You remember that woman who told you, 
It doesn't matter. Even if you to sleep under the bridge, I'm yours for life. You are not under the bridge. You are still in the room. She's already gone. Our churches have been made weak because of the spirit of Opa. A spirit that cannot pay the price. But thank God Almighty. There were two. One kissed goodbye. One stayed. Bazalwane, what really, really rocks my world is to think what was it about Naomi? When technically there's nothing to follow this woman for that made Ruth to stay. Be careful about legacy. There are things in life that are more powerful than degrees, things that are more powerful than money, things that are more powerful than connection. It's called legacy. At our age, we still remember our mamas. At all the friend stuff in the early service. We came from a very wealthy home, dead and means and stuff, and for whatever reason, you went bankrupt. But the issue when you're in a upper class and then you're dead, your parents go back bankrupt, your friends, parents don't go bankrupt with your dad. That was the problem I had. My parents have stepped down, scaled down, lost everything. But the friend I was still mixing with, the parent found the formula to hang up there. How do you remain normal when your dad is not a big name anymore? How do you remain normal when your cell phone rings during preaching? <laughs> oh, my words. My words. Well, Mama, let's come back to Mama. She knew I was losing it. The year is 1974. She understood what was at stake. And in a moment, Mama calls me. Not even 74, 73. She calls me, she says, son, you see all these kids in the neighborhood? The parent might have money, they might have this and that, but there's no child as handsome as you. Ah! Hey, hey, hey! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, whoa! Hey! My God, my God, my God! Listen, I don't care if she was right, I don't care if she was wrong. All I knew, at that moment, I knew I have something. They have money, I have beauty. They have money, I have beauty. Play with the most handsome guy in the neighborhood. That's me. Forty-three years have gone past. The word of my mama are still ringing in my head <laughs> at my age. Knowing whatever you say about me, I'm handsome. <laughs> Woo! Well, beauty is a debatable thing. Maybe for you I'm the ugliest one, but for my mama, I am not. The effort keeps me going. Think about your legacy on a mother's day. When your name is mentioned, when you're not around, what do you think people think? Why do we think when you talk about robbers, people are breaking into people's homes, nobody thinks about a white man? Not because you're a thief, because someone before you spoiled it for you. Why do you think every mother's in, in law name becomes a curse to people? Not because you're a terrible mother in law, but some mother in law spoiled it for you. Why do we think Christianity is treated today as a nuisance in a society? Not because Christianity is not powerful, but Christians have spoiled it for the rest. Think about your legacy. I love Naomi. She said openly, the hand of God is against me. But the 
person deprived with the hand of God can attract the next generation. Because there was something about Naomi that was too powerful to let go. Think, think, Bazalwani, think. What kind of God should I believe in who kills your husband, kills your sons? You left your home and came to my home as a refugee. I don't have time. I can live on this thing for a long, long time. Moab is a subclass community. By law, Moabites and Ammonites have no right to enter the assemblies of the Jews. But in that space, a Jewish person under Jehovah is going to seek for survival in a Moabite land. And you want to tell me your God is powerful? What is it about your God that will make me follow? But the most Spoken words, preached words, touching words ever spoken were spoken by a Moabite. Let's look at this word. Verse 16. Allow me to go back to what you already know, what our pastor has already taught us and has been teaching us. The reason why I chose to do that this morning is for us to see how we're talking about fits into the whole big picture of where we are going as a church this year. Amen. Now, you will understand that our theme for this year is growth is divine. Amen? Amen. Why are you going down now? Amen? amen. Just keep that, go that amen going until I finish. It just, it just encourages.